What's up guys, Jeep and Bubba here, and uh, as promised, I'm doing some rev uh, reviews on uh, some camping gear that I just purchased, and uh, all these are items that I sell um, at blackbearoffroad.com, and they're items that I wanted to personally add to my own camping gear, and some of these are items I wanted to upgrade, and some are just items I wanted in general, so let's hop into it. Um, I figured I'd do an unboxing today, and then I've got a couple camping trips coming up, and um, shortly and I'll try them out and tell you how they work on the second video um, and uh, just stay tuned I got some wheeling videos and camping videos coming up got a few events um, coming up soon there's the uh, uh, wheeling for CF the wheeling for a cure event in Indiana uh, we're gonna be going camping uh, first weekend of June so you'll see a video coming out early June for that and there's a little bit of wheeling involved in that and um, got a couple other few little rides and things that we're going to be attending so uh stay tuned but let's get right into the reviews and uh producer nicole did you have a question nope. no no questions okay i'm gonna put my phone down all right so first thing i'm gonna show you is not an item i'm doing a review on well i'll give you a sort of review um let me move this over to the side ish all right this is the knife that I've been carrying for, I don't know, four or five, six months. And it's a spring assist that has drywall on it currently. It's a Kershaw and um, it's made in China. I bought it because it was cheap. Uh, it was like we got had a couple coupons and I think it was like 10 bucks but normally retail for like 20 I like the grip and um, it's lightweight and I just wanted something uh, for everyday carrying uh, just cutting rope opening boxes in my pocket and I'll still continue using this the great thing about this knife um, it's a Curtis Shaw speed safe and I forget the um, they're what they called it as far as I'm, there's knife guys out there they're going to be going that's the dagger or the sliver or the vanilla wafer version of that i don't know what it's really called but it's a speed safe and i've had a couple of these in fact i had an american uh, version of this and uh, i carried it for almost five years and it was fantastic and super sharp and it would hold an edge wonderfully and this thing came out super sharp where it would shave your hair and now it's pretty dull and it would lose it really quickly and I think that just goes into the quality of the blade what it's actually made with this one says uh, 1308TANBW and some of you know what that means uh, so let me pre-warn you I love camping I don't know as much about the gear as I know about the about the Jeeps, but I do know what works when I'm camping and what I want, and that's why I've gotten rid of some items, and I'm going to be adding some items. Um, and so that leads me into that what I was going into. So this knife's been great. I just had to sharpen it a lot more than other knives, and um, I really missed that U.S. made Kershaw knife. I bought it on a Snap-on truck. And uh, it wasn't your typical snap-on Chinese knife. It was pretty expensive, and it held a good blade, and it was really well made, and I wish I hadn't lost it. So I started carrying this. <coughs> Sorry about that. So um, it, it's not super heavy, but it's a little heavy and a little bulky in my pocket. Uh, when I'm outside working, maybe doing landscaping, cutting the grass, that kind of thing. I still want a knife. still be able to cut rope, um, that sort of thing. You can tell it's dirty, needs some grease and cleaning. But um, I'll use it to unbox a few things. But let me show you what I got. And I'm thinking of using this now as my everyday carry. And um, it's a Boker Plus. And so, uh, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correct. It's a German name. So maybe it's like Boka or something right like that. Um, this one's still made in China. And I'm sure they make quality stuff in Germany. Just like Kershaw makes quality stuff in the U.S. And they make some quality Chinese stuff as well. But... Um, I would say this is like a B minus where the US one I have is an A plus. So um, this one's right about the same price range. Nicole, what does this Boker go for? It's a new item on the website. 
$24.75. That's $2,400. No, it's $24.75 plus shipping. <coughs> it comes with registration for some sort of warranty and a delicious edible packet. There's magnets in this, which I'm impressed with. I just want to... Oh. Oh. Okay. All right, here's the deal. I hope you weren't under impressed. It's small. All right. This is a normal knife size. I'll show you. This is a Samsung, I don't know, seven or something, whatever the hell it is. So normal-ish, gives you an idea. Tiny, tiny knife. But it's lightweight, it's compact, but let me show you the blade design. Boom! And they got these nice little places you put your two fingers here. All right, protects your hands. And we can just get into it. Just, I did not know it would do that, but it just ripped right into it. It definitely shaves a little hair off. Yeah, like that. Boom. Gets the hairs right off. And um, it's uh, AUSH. So Australian 8. I'm sure that's not what it stands for. But it's a shorter blade. The clip runs the length of it, which I like. And what I like is how wide and how thick this is it seems really stout and um, give you a picture of the splines this one over time this has gotten really wiggly and I've tightened it and it just it just thing takes a lot of maintenance to keep up and that's the price when you're in that price point for instance that uh, other cursor I had was like in the $200 range and this is in the 10 to $20 range and now this is in the the twenty to twenty five dollar range. Um, I think this is one of the best you can get. Some people will argue with me, but the whole this is gonna be an everyday carry. This is not necessarily a camping thing, but I think it'd be great for camping, just for you know opening boxes, opening packages. You could even do some meal prep. I can see you just cutting some little blocks of cheese up with this thing. You know, uh, honestly, the way this is shaped and designed here, not even joking, you could do some skinning with this. Um, cause I, I like, if you're going to skin an animal to kind of be able to go up a little bit and, and just have something thin and just have that angle where this, it's kind of almost awkward. Cause you're like, if that makes sense, I would not want to skin an animal with this. I would not want to, I'd rather have my skin a knife, but, uh, I think this would do a good job at that filleting fish. I don't think I would want this, but, uh, really a nice little blade in a small compact package. And with my phone in my pocket and I have a front carry wallet, this isn't going to take up a whole lot of room. And I'm going to see how it does. And I may say this thing was a big waste of time. Just throw it in your glove box or tackle box or something. We'll see. I'll carry it uh, for a couple weeks and I'll let you know um, on that video at the beginning of June sometime. I did get hurt and I did a knife review. That's one solid point. All right. Going into knives. A knife company you've heard of, K-Bar. Um, some people really like them. Some people really hate them. Um, most people who hate them were in the military and had to carry a K-Bar. But it's a product that's made in the U.S. And it's probably one of the cheapest items on our website. This comes from New York. And I think what I'm going to do with this is actually throw it in my Jeep. I have in my camping gear box a, um, a kind of like a Swiss Army knife. <laughs> Uh, spoon knife combo it's kind of clumsy this may prove to be better but uh, I'd be nice just like an impromptu camping or impromptu just eating things sometimes people are like here try this pie or people are like here eat this that happens a lot or if you get the flimsy hardware when you're going through Bojangles and you've got some rice and beans you want to go for this murder spork this is a k-bar spork uh, and let me show you what's up with it. Should I? I could probably use the spork to make itself out, but we should. Oh, butter. Let's see if the Kershaw can do the same. No. I really like Kershaw, don't get me wrong. I've been carrying Kershaw knives for 
seven years now. All right. Most important thing that comes with the sport, rape whistle. Okay, rape whistle does not work. It doesn't say anywhere that it is a rape whistle. I just noticed that, and I thought it kind of had an odd shape. I don't know why they put that little. Maybe that's let the gravy pass through. Okay, this is what the extra stuff uh, says. It's from New York. We won't hold that against it. It's a nice spork action. I like. I think I'd like a little bigger on the end, but uh, again, it's the cheapest thing on our website. What's the price, producer Nicole? Six dollars and ninety-five cents. Six dollars and ninety-five cents. I mean, I think I'm gonna get Nicole one. I think I'm gonna get a couple of them, um, just because they're handy. Let me show you the best part. These things are straight tactical, and I haven't practiced with this, so I don't even know. <coughs> Inside of this, there's supposed to be a knife. Oh boy. So there wasn't any kind of release. You really had to pull on it. And that was a little dangerous. Look at that. And all of this is uh, some kind of plastic. It doesn't say what it's made out of. But it, if you're looking at it, it almost seems like it's metal. This would definitely make it through a tough steak. You could spork it and steak. And again, I wouldn't use that for flaying a fish or or really doing anything other than cutting food like that you're, you've already prepared. Um, although, you know, just say you're sitting around the campfire and you're having some oatmeal and a coyote comes up, you're like, not today, coyote! I think it's better than nothing, right? K-Bar, Spork Knife Combo. I'm giving it a hard time, but it's just kind of a funny thing. But I think if I don't cut myself taking it apart, wow, it really holds together well. Honestly, this would save a lot of weight and save a lot of space in my current backpack setup that I carry. So if this is your, I think I'm either going to put this in my glove box or... Um, I have Bartek seat covers in my Cherokee because I have TJ seats and they have little pouches, um, Molly pouches. So I think I might just throw one of these in there and then throw one in my backpack. Um, but made in the U.S., I think it's a good product. Maybe you'll like it, maybe you won't. I'm just going to throw it around so I can get real review stuff out of it. I'll sanitize it later. Okay, let's get into the stuff I'm most excited about, although I was excited about this little boker knife. I'm tempted to just stand at the table, but I won't because this is our dining room table. Okay, I'm very excited about this. And when I saw it come in, I was like, this would make a great Father's Day gift. And my dad doesn't watch my channel because I don't know if he knows how to get on YouTube yet. We're working on him. He's got Facebook, but no Instagram. Anyways, uh, this is a company called Snow and Neely, and they're from... Uh, Oh, I'm going to pronounce this wrong. It looks like Smyrna. It is Smyrna. It just smell, they spell it weird. Smyrna. I'm from Smyrna, Maine, but not Ireland. People in Maine kind of talk like they don't know how to say newspaper. They're like, I was in the newspaper and I was looking at, I don't know. Sorry, that was Amish. I'll work on it. Anyways, quit making fun of people from Maine and their mosquito problem. It's 100% made in the USA. I like people from Maine, and this is hickory, which is awesome. Love me some hickory. Comes with this cool tag that has a story about the hardness, and uh, uh, it's good for everyday task. It's a two and a quarter pound axe, and uh, it's fitted to a 28 inch piece of American hickory handle. Um, what I love about it is the weight and the size and the versatility. This would be fantastic in your off-road rig. I'll tell you why. It's not too short, and it's not too long. Too, too short, we're talking a hatchet style. Now, I keep a hatchet in my Jeep, um, and sometimes it's the same hatchet I throw in my backpack um, to go backpacking. If you guys go way back, I did a review on uh, Overland stuff, what, what I bring out when I do a typical Overland thing. If you want me to do another refresher or even show you what I throw in, I have like a day pack that I bring out when I go wheeling if I'm going to go by myself. If I'm going to go to a park and there's going to be a ton of people there, I don't worry about it. But uh, if I go just with me and one other guy and we're going to be in the woods for a whole weekend or me and the wife, 
Um, then I bring my hatchet, and I like my hatchet, you know, uh, for food prep um, to fight off bears. But <laughs> it's really good for uh, just preparing wood for a little fire. Um, and it's even good for felling the small dead trees or whatever. But I wanted something else that was a little bit more. Um, I love axes, knives, flashlights, gloves. I can't own enough of any of them. And this really drew to me because it, I could fit this in my backpack, hanging around the back. It's not too long. Um, you know, for the house, for chopping wood, maybe if you're trying to get in smaller pieces for the fireplace, it'd be good. Um, but, you know, I like to get a maul or something like that for the big logs. This is more of a finishing, uh, completing um, piece. But nice, good uh, blunt on the back if you're going to be driving in some stakes. I like the hatchet for that. I think this would be more just for firewood um, and to fight off mountain lions, you know. And to show your buddies when they come over, I just oiled up my Snow and Neely axe. They've been in business since 1864. Uh, one thing I like about it, it's called Our Best. I didn't even know anything else after they said it's our best axe because they have a lot of really nice axes. So I thought that was great. Uh, I know these sound like dumb reasons to pick an axe, but they're the same reasons why you buy them. You would, you know, if you go on YouTube, they would tell you something like, if you look at this, it's really ergonomic, so you can chop in the old Lincoln style. Eh, that's hobnob. Anyways, it comes with this leather sheath that's no extra. That's included in the price. It's got some nice brass snaps. I really like that because we're going to have it in your Jeep and, and you know, you got something flying around or you're reaching for it. Um, it's nice to have. Not a crazy sharp edge, although it's a really well machined edge. And I think if uh, you were to take a little um, a little sharpening stone to it, you could get an even finer edge. But for cutting wood, it's above and beyond. I guess I'm kind of used to my hatchet where I use it for, like, doing a little bit of woodworking. But... Nice edge on it, nice piece of steel. Really like the weight and the design of it. It's just perfect for chopping wood or knocking down some deadfall um, or hammering some tent stakes or whatever you may need to do. Um, I find a hatchet, recently I found it's almost better than a hammer in a Jeep. It's got a good weight and then you may have some brush or something you're trying to clear. I don't know. I've just found it really useful lately and I want to see how useful this axe may be. So I'll give you a review of how uh, how good the axe is as an axe and then how great it is to have in a Jeep or an off-road vehicle. Um, already really liking the snap and everything. Um, Nicole, what was the price on that? $73.95. $73 which um, if you're comparing it to something like a Husky axe, I bought... Um, one similar for like forty dollars, and um, you know, it's a little bit more expensive, but you're getting the hickory handle, you're getting a, a lot better piece of steel, you're getting the sheath, which you're not going to get at your no, local Home Depot. Uh, so, and it's all made in the USA. It, it's more like a Husky Varna axe. If you've seen some of those, those are really desirable. Um, another thing, a little point I like to bring up that I, uh, a lot of survivor people will talk about is you see the fiberglass and you're why would you want a fiberglass that's lighter um, maybe it takes a little shock when you're chopping I have a fiberglass axe that's that this is replacing the fiberglass axe has been in my Jeep since my first Cherokee so I've had it probably five or six seven years now um, and it does good but the problem is if I break or shatter that fiberglass on the trail or camping I can't replace it because the way the head's designed, it's not meant to replace one. So you can see here, this is where they've charred the wood in, and they've done a really good job at finishing it. But if this breaks, I could take it off, and I could use this head, or I can use my hatchet head to make another stick in the wood impromptu, and I've still got an axe, a usable axe. Um, or even if you get back home and you want to put another one on, you can go down to um, your local hardware store, get a nice piece of wood and you have another axe. You can't do that with fiberglass, it's the same price, but you can't ever reuse that head um, other than a door stopper. So, just a, a little idea. All right, Nicole, was a, my wife, was the most excited about this item. And um, this is made by Gerber, and I've had a lot of good success with Gerber products. 
Um, I like Reaper knives. I like their pocket knives. I, I'd say they have really good stainless that they've used. Um, I've used with them. And um, I don't know if this one is stainless. I didn't do my research. I just saw how cool this packaging is and how cool this looked. Um, I've got a new vendor that I'm, I, I can get all kind of camping stuff, knives, um, army surplus stuff, axes. And I've just picked the stuff that appealed to me. But if there's something that might appeal to you guys, let me know. Um, but this comes with a, a kitchen knife and a paring knife and it's a 7CR 17 MOV blade and it's full tang which I do know what that means that means the blade runs full length of the, of the handle which makes it a lot stronger uh, blade that's for the camping knife and full tang as well in the pairing knife and it's made of the uh, same steel so that's a 7CR 17 MOV um, Sorry to the knife experts out there from butchering this. Um, it has a lot of features, and I'm not going to read all those to you. I'm just going to show you what I think I like about it. But Gerber makes some good quality outdoor products, and uh, this has a lifetime warranty uh, in North America only. So sorry, people watching this in Chile, you can't get it. Um, anyways, full lifetime warranty. I was going to see one other thing. Oh, it's made in China, uh, but it's imported through Portland, Oregon. Uh, I think that's important to say where it's from. But here's why I like it above all of these things. Um, I've had, One of my first pocket knives I ever had was a Gerber. And it was fantastic. Super light. And it was hard to break. The blade wasn't... It was started sharp. And, you know, but it was, it was serrated. And um, I was younger. But it was just a great knife. It, it held up well it wasn't super super sharp over time but that was probably my neglect anyways um, so I was trying to do the company but I have like some cheap knives we bought at Walmart that are like the plastic knives that are like for pairing um, and they're lightweight and they're good I want something a little bit sharper because a lot of times when I go out camping I grab a steak when I'm out there and I maybe want to cut that steak or prep it. Second thing that happens a lot, almost every time I go camping, I find a place to go fishing, and I don't bring a fillet knife. I forget it every time. So I want something that I can fillet uh, trout or bass or something like that, and I can just easily prep it up. And then a lot of times I buy cheese, and I don't think about cutting it. And you could cut it with this, but it's just kind of messy. You can cut it with this, but you better hope that you weren't picking your bunions with it earlier. So you know, I want something that's dedicated to it. And what's nice is I can throw this in my camping bag or my box. I carry like a big um, Rubbermaid box that's like one of their heavy duty ones. I have two of those boxes. I'm trying to condense down to one. And this is going to help me condense down by also being a cutting board. So on top it's a cutting board and then it has these drip trays as you have on all cutting boards uh, for blood and guts or uh, grease or whatever. But I can already tell you it feels nice and thick. I think you can cut on it pretty good and it's not going to cause any issues. Let me see if I can get in here. It has this locking looking thing here. Ooh, I figured it out. It was so hard not opening this stuff. I've had it for days and I said I'm not opening it until... Oh my goodness. I'm not opening it, <laughs> any of it, until I start filming it and enjoying it with you guys. So if I struggle to get into some of these things... It's only because I didn't have any practice. I didn't even I didn't open the box or nothing. Okay, so on the top there's this like locking mechanism, and I've unlocked it. Okay, duly noted. The tray may need some WD-40. Ah, uh, it it moves pretty good. Oh, you have to make it past this lock. So there's two locks. Now it won't open, which is nice. You don't want knives flying around. Boom, you're there, and then you got one more. You just gotta make it past that. Boom. So it's a double locking system. They wanna make sure that you really wanna get in here. Okay, cool. So, some more of this edible silica gel. It's my favorite. And um, I'll show you what's in here. You have the two knives. And I'll tell you, the picture makes these knives look bigger, but maybe when I can take the plastic off, 
I don't know. Um, there's a sharpener, which I didn't even see that the thing. There's a sharpener built in, so you put the knife here, hit that sharpener, and they're actually just some coarse ceramic stone. That's awesome. Um, that's the right way to sharpen a knife, and I'm really glad it has that. I'm pretty pumped about it. So, and then uh, you have some space here. Maybe you want to put some shears, or a bottle opener, or a wine opener, or a sp spork fits, and the knife fits, and the uh, axe doesn't fit. <coughs> Cell phone would almost fit. It's pretty cool. All right, let's take the plastic off. We got her open. So top was your cutting tray. Oh, one more click, and you can completely move the cutting tray. And it actually has a little rubber piece on the bottom, so it can support itself completely on its own uh, if you want to take this off and use the sharpener, I guess. I like that it has different stages of the locking mechanism. Kind of cool. All right. Pairing knife. Which, I don't know if you guys have butcher blocks at home with knives, but my favorite knife in any butcher block is the paring knife. Uh, it's usually one of the sharpest, but smaller knives, I find, are easier to do a lot of tasks. And um, mm -hmm. it's the one I use the most for opening mail or cutting onions or uh, just cutting meat, anything. And I know it's not the longest, but paring knife is my favorite to do all those things with. It's got a nice little handhold here. It's kind of a cheap feeling piece of rubber. <coughs> Apologize. But the blade looks really nice. It's like that um, powder coated or uh, chair coated um, finish. And it looks, boy does it look sharp. I'm gonna be bald after this. It's not as sharp as that Boker, but no, it, it cuts it up. This would be a little, a trout, this would be fine. A smaller, a smallmouth bass, smaller bass, this would be fine for filleting. I was hoping this blade would be a little bit longer. Um, again, I didn't even read. Let me tell you the length of it. It's got a lanyard loop to say it's 1.1 ounce. Um, the cutting surface is a 10 by 8, by the way, and they don't tell you. So I was kind of just going off the pictures. But, I mean, like a small, you could, I could get away with it. I, you know, you want something longer if you're going to be working down a fish. And that might even be something you guys are interested in. Um, maybe you guys are vegetarians or uh, something like that. I doubt it, watching the Jeep and Bubba channel. Anyways, it's a nice blade. Uh, the handle leaves a little to be desired, I think. Just kind of seems cheaper. But it's full tanks. So this metal's going all the way down here. Lanyard loop. Uh, it would be great for food prep. Um, I'm eyeballing this knife right here like crazy because I love big knives and I cannot lie. And I'm pretty stoked. The thing was sharp, by the way, so I am excited about that. And the blade seems good quality. Oh, this is where your money comes from. So they probably in China that this case costs like three cents, and that that paring knife costs like fifty cents, and then they put a couple bucks into this. Whoa, whoa, this thing. This thing is beef. You can definitely feel the full tank. I mean, this, I can barely feel the steel. Like there's more rubber in in the handle, which it, by the way, fits in the case really well. This thing, I just, it feels hefty. I wonder what the weight is that I'm feeling the weight difference. It's 6.2 ounces, so literally uh, five more ounces than that one. And there's just so much blade to it. This, I mean, I could literally take a turkey apart. Um, you could do any kind of food prep you would want to do. It would be difficult. Again, I'd rather the paring knife for a fish. Um, Trying to think in my camera bag, do I have anything? Yeah, this would be my only thing I have if I was going to prepare some kind of fish. And I think this would be fine. A lot of places where I camp, it's trout, and that would be fine. Uh, and bass, I usually just cook it on. I just need to open it and gut it, so that would be fine. This thing, we could literally, we could debone uh, a deer. This thing is beefy. Let me tell you why I, like, I really, really like this thing. Um, great grip, feels wonderful in the hand. I think I could fight up a pack of wolves with it. Like Liam Neeson, just tape it and then, you know, I don't know if you've seen the, 
the movie Grey. Um, but this would be a, a complete bushcraft knife. Like, this isn't just your food prep knife. If you had this to take out in your day pack, which is a little heavy for your day pack, but if you had this in your Jeep and you needed to survive, this is a full-on bushcraft knife. You could do, this right here, you could do everything to survive. Um, I can see you chopping wood hitting the back of this. I mean, you can get out there and if you need to split some wood, of course you have this, but smaller pieces this thing can do some serious work it could do anything you want in the kitchen i'm impressed with how wide this blade is and how beefy it is i'll probably use this the least amount but i'll always pull it out and just be like Arr. it seems awesome not sure if it's too goofy but i'm like a kid in a candy store when i get camping gear so i like this kind of ring on the finger here too that feels really good you could work this knife really really well I can shave my beard with it yeah pull some hair off it it feels pretty sharp the paring knife seemed sharper this is such a thick blade I'm telling you this feels quality it really just feels like this rubber is just coating the full tang like this falling this this spine all the way down through right here where this one well that's what's different too look there's your lanyard loop with the metal coming all the way out. I mean, you could really, you could break up, you can break up some dandelions to make some soup out of there. Listen, I watch a lot of survival shows and I am such a wannabe, but I'm an overlander at heart because I don't want to starve to death. Uh, I want to go off-roading and then do a little camping on the side. And I bet a lot of you watching this channel feel the same way. Um, but this one's got a plastic lanyard piece. So yeah, I don't want to talk like I have all the the terminology or whatever these are just some items that appealed to me i figured i'd review them and see what you guys thought they're on my website um and if you wanted to order them they're uh they're available gerber logo here gerber logo there you know bear grills works with gerber and i think bear grills would rock this knife here you'd probably laugh at that one but i think this one would be good for chopping up onions or peeling an apple or uh or working a trout man this thing is crazy i would I almost want to get a sheath and just carry that bad boy. All right. Well, this is, uh, I think it's 65 bucks. Is that right? So 65 bucks retail. Um, and what's kind of cool is the coal discover that holds our spork. So what if you got two sporks? You have your sporks, you have your two knives, which means you have another knife. So let's just walk through this really, really quickly. I have this, cut up some onions, and some mushrooms, boom, and some and some cheese for a pre-dinner snack for the cheese. And then I take this, I've brought this just big hunk of meat and I just slab off a couple fillets out of it, boom, and a couple of breakfast steaks, ch -ch -ch -ch. boom, right? And then cat walks up, boom, hit him with the blunt side, ch -ch -ch. make a hat. And then all that's done, I cook it up, which we'll get into that in a second. Cook it up, eat it. Need to need to cut it in smaller pieces. Boom. We're good to go. Got everything you need in the sport K bar sport and the uh, Gerber. What do they call this kit? It is the uh, outdoor freescape camp kitchen kit. Uh, available at blackbirdoffroad.com. Um, and again, like I told you, and I've told you guys a million times before. None of this stuff was sponsored. I paid for all of it. If I get sponsored, I will let you know what I got sponsored for. Um, you know, like the wheels or tires on my Jeep. Uh, I'll review them the same, but I just want you to know up front. So this one, I've, I've purchased this. And um, it says designed and engineered in Portland, but made in China. So it's halfway U.S. It also has another little drip tray here. Kind of cool. I really like it. I think it's going to be good in my kit. All right. Last and final thing, made by Stanley since 1913. So just slightly uh, new. So just slightly newer than the Jeep, not Jeep Wrangler, just the Jeep in general. Um, I have, and I wish I'd have pulled it out. Uh, the first thing Stanley that I bought in the modern era, I think I might have used to have Stanley thermos back in the day that just was reminiscent of something grandpa or my dad would have had or whatever that was just like the old pla I think everyone has one at their house or seen one at a thrift store or whatever but 
<clears throat> Actually, I think Nicole might be grabbing it. I have a single burner that I make coffee in. Um, you could use it easily to make rice or oatmeal or chili. Thanks, Nicole. And uh, I bought it on a whim because we wanted to make pour over coffee. And I thought, I just need something to boil over a campfire or over a camp stove or over a single burner. And so it has a lid. And it originally came with two plastic cups that came on the inside. And it all just locks into this little kit. And this thing folds and the handles in it. And this is the first, like, Stanley thing in my adult life I bought. Um, it tells you how many ounces are in it. What I do with it is I always got those two cups in it stuffed with some coffee and um, some coffee filters. And then I take a single burner, I hop it right on top of that thing with like a little propane burner. And um, then when I'm done, when it boils, which it boils fast. Cooking in this, I boil water in like two minutes, even in like 10 degrees. Um, and just do your pour over it, boom, you got coffee on the trail. But you could easily fit some uh, Uncle Ben's up in there or some uh, cream of wheat or some chili some some, uh, some hormel chili or something I don't know but I really like the quality of it and I've seen Stanley's trying to make a lot of new products and uh, they have like new coolers new thermoses and things like that out and uh, I started I, I through this vendor I'm using they have multiple of these kits so there's like a smaller kit uh, there's a medium kit, and then this is the biggest kit, and uh, it's 80 bucks. It's got a lifetime warranty on it, and let's see if it says if it's made in the U.S. It's made in China. That's the theme tonight. So, uh, China, China, the spork was the only thing made in the U.S. God bless America and our sporks and KFC. Boker, just slicing through a little tape here. I should have looked up how to pronounce that. All this is stainless steel camp stuff. And uh, me and my wife, we have, if you, again, want to go back to that overlaying video that I have, we have a, uh, like a camp chef, double burner, big boy that holds 14 inch fry pan. And it, I use a regular frying pan on it and that takes up a large space in my, that big container. So, I mean, we're like car camping we go. We're not saving weight. We're not worried about backpacking. We're just like, throw it all in. Well now, We've got this beautiful daughter of ours, and we're planning on taking her camping. Um, the weekend after July 4th. And uh, we're just thinking, we need to fit in her stuff. They gave us some great packing peanuts. We need to fit her stuff in there too, so we're trying to save a little, a little space. Instead of bringing a pot and, and all this stuff, I thought, wouldn't it be great we, get, we have all these plates, we have all this silverware. Let's condense down to just a Gerber cutting board. Let's condense down to sporks and the Stanley Adventure Base Camp Kit. And uh, by the way, this thing's 80 bucks and it's all stainless and it fits all in this container. That's right, I'm an authorized pot dealer. My stainless Stanley pot It's dishwasher safe, it's BPA free, which is very important. Um, and it can become extremely hot during use. It's sad that we have to put that on there. This thing is 3.7 quarts or 3.5 liters for you Canadians. Um, it's, let's just see this. This is kind of cool. It's a little bungee. It's kind of neat. You could probably actually reuse that in camp on something else. But that holds the lid down. Big lid. So I'm thinking... You got your boker, you're just fighting off wildlife if you had to. It actually has a diagram to tell you how to put all this stuff back together, which I would need, my wife wouldn't, but I would need that. I hope you guys have been really impressed at how I've been able to just open these packages and not take 20 minutes, because if I wasn't filming this, each one of these would take 20 minutes just to open a box or something like that. Okay, so first thing that pops out, it's going to be a frying pan, and I'm looking at the back, not because I don't know, don't know it's a frying pan, but it's uh, 32 ounces. That's what I wanted to uh, find. And all these items are going to be dishwashed, they're safe, and they're all BPA-free. Um, same as this little guy. They have these little spring-loaded, if you've done any camping, a lot of camping gears like that. Um, that's how you're going to slide that down. Oh, man. 
and now that folds up and then during use you would slide that down and then it's all good if you guys have ever bought aluminum camp gear it's not uh, super healthy um, but also another thing about aluminum it's really flimsy and first thing this handle is a little flimsy but the steel this is made out of I can tell right off the bat it's fantastic I know it's stainless but it's got some thickness to it it doesn't feel thin at all um, it's got a little weight to it and um, this would be good for me and it'd be maxed out with me and my wife if we're doing eggs or something like that or beans but there's a you know we got this whole pot to cook in as well um, but I think this would be great if I made a little rope attachment on my backpack or I just threw this in with my backpack uh, I need to do a video on this way to carry my backpack I have this pack that I just throw in my bag uh, when we're going to camp and I explained earlier and it's got a bunch of good stuff if you were to break down in the woods and uh, need some help but uh, I think it'd be good for one or two people I think you'd be maxed out at two people or uh, a guy and a dog or a lady and a dog or uh, we'll take their cats camping I don't think so. um, this tells you how to take care of it and here's what's cool you got a seat belt you put it in this one oh buddy look at that now I have a spatula it's got a little angle on it it's plastic um, it actually feels pretty thick it's about what you'd have in your house maybe like uh, kind of just a step above dollar store quality but it's nice that it packs down into this and that's what we have in our uh, in our box that we have now in this little box and it's just a window to the dollar store or Walmart and we bought the cheapest thing they had because we're like oh we're just gonna use it camping um, but we've probably used it like 20 times now so um, it's nice it's nice to have something quality the nice this kind of breaks down I really just see what this does over time so I'll give you a couple of reviews on it and let you know by the way I just noticed in the box this is th a three ply frying pan so that's why it feels like that it's pretty dang solid uh, in a war zone you might get to sleep with that underneath your shirt and be fine I don't know don't try it you got a ladle a spoon this would be awesome I'll tell you what let's just skip ahead let's get all this stuff out and you're just by yourself you're a dude in the woods you're getting away from life society in general and you just take you about 10 packs of ramen and throw her in here and you're just sitting there you just throw the spork away you just go straight to just that'd be great no, this would be awesome to do uh, some chili. I've also done hash browns and eggs all mixed together with sausage, and uh, that would be fantastic. It's measured out to tell you 101 ounces or 34 ounces or has liters. Um, so I'm Stanley honest about that was loud. Nice little pot. I don't. We don't actually have a pot that we bring out with us. We have a small um, thing we use for beans, but uh, that thing would be great. And what's good about this Stanley Stanley stuff? Even if we didn't have our, uh, um, if we didn't have as much room in the Jeep, we didn't want to bring the double burner camp chef, and I just brought my single burner for coffee or maybe like for breakfast, we can make a fire and just throw this directly on the fire, and I know it would hold up, because uh, as you can tell, I've done something like that. Even the labels held up pretty good on that. I'll show what else it comes with. So uh, I feel like I'm on an infomercial now that I have all these things in front of me. But we got the spatulas, the spoon, frying pan this is supposed to be a uh, another cutting board and um, you can use it attached to this or you can take it out it comes with four sporks they do not have knives that jet out of them for defending yourself against wildlife uh, but they do feel pretty sturdy and if you needed a knife it doesn't come with one so they just hope that you're eating uh, Uncle Ben's it's got this nice rubber thing here, and uh, hot mat. that's a that's a hot mat. That's important. I think that some of this stuff is kind of designed for your average person to go down to a campground or maybe an RV, uh, tent camper kind of people. Uh, but I think it works great for overlanding. Uh, Maybe a little cheesy, but I like to put stuff in use and see what works and doesn't work. Um, so what's kind of cool, I think, kind of neat. I hate washing dishes 
when I'm just in general, but also camping. It comes with all these plates and these bowls. And I noticed this online and it drew me to it. You've done eating your meal on this. I would need two of these plates. These plates are a little small. They'd be good for eggs, I think. Um, they feel pretty sturdy, though. Um, be good for frisbee. No, but seriously, and then you, nice size bowl. But you get done eating out of it. You wash it. Check this out. Boom! Drying rack. I hate washing, and that just I just throw that on there. That's wonderful. I really like that. I'll tell you what. Winter overlanding, I wouldn't want all this stuff because it's always just so cold. Um, I wouldn't want to be like, oh, I got my big pot and I got this. I have this like cheap, the old style like speckled pot and I just throw in the fire and I'm done cooking. I just throw it on my roof rack and just strap a bungee on it and uh, I'll wash it later. But um, going out with the family and we've got to kind of, we're going to do some uh, a rustic cabin, like I said, coming up and some wheeling and then uh, another trip with my daughter here in a few weeks. Um, this stuff will be perfect. I think it'd be great. So that's it. That's everything. You got the axe. We got the knife. We've got sports galore. We've got the Gerber kit that I'm excited to use. Um, all this stuff, it's all available at blackbearoffroad.com. I kind of mentioned the pricing. Um, here's what I'm going to do. If you've stayed awake and listened to all this, um, all these items are under 100 bucks, And... You have to be over 100 bucks right now. I have a promo going for over $99 start with it, to get free shipping. Um, so what I can do is, if you watch this video, you can email me, Instagram me. Um, so it's info at blackbearoffroad.com, and that's blackbearoff-road.com. And then um, you can, uh, at Jeep and Bub on Instagram, at blackbearoffroad. On Instagram or uh, check out our website or uh, call us either way if you wanted to buy one of these items message me mention that you saw the YouTube video and we'll either uh, give you a discount on the item or free shipping um, you know we'll work something out some of these items I, it depends on where you live if I can work out free shipping or not but if you're interested in an item and we appreciate you watching the video we'll hook you up just uh, call us email us or message us one way or another and we'll hook you up. I appreciate you watching. Before I go, let's see if I can fit all this stuff back in here and remember the way it worked. Okay, so we had sports. Oh, where was the mat? Mat was on the bottom. I would never use this. I would burn my hand like nine times. I'll probably use it the most now that I have it. Sports are in there. Okay, that one in the bottom, maybe. Yes, it did. And then unbuckle the seat belt. That seems like it may break over time. It's plastic. But I can tell you one thing, this frying pan and that pot, they will last a lifetime. They just seem quality. I'm out, I'm already out, okay. I think this went first, but I don't know. Oh, I'm gonna force it. I think you're wrong. My wife's right here, and she's just dying to get in here and tell me what I'm doing wrong. So she's, oh, you know what? I'm gonna cheat. Whew. All right, here's what I'm doing wrong. This is great. This is a road map. We're working through this, and I get to be a shining hero in front of my wife. All right, boom. I did everything right in that base piece. Then you got to do plates first, then bowls in the top of the bowl, these items, and then you go frying pan upside down. Eight seconds.
Thanks for watching.